Hello everyone. Welcome to Druid Summit. There have been some really great sessions so far and we hope that you're enjoying it. So what is in this talk? In this talk, we are going over some of the extreme ways that we have seen our customers use Druid. We go over these instances, how it affected the cluster, the troubleshooting involved, and we will also share any improvements that the community has made. The reason we think it is a topic of its own is because there are already a good number of talks on the common challenges, but not enough about not so uncommon challenges. In fact, we originally intended the topic of this talk to be around common challenges, but realized later on that it will be more interesting to talk about this less explored aspect of Druid. So here we begin. Let me start with the introductions. I'm Abhishek, as the slide rightly says. I am managing the Druid engineering team at India. I joined Imply a year ago and have been an active contributor to Druid ever since. Previously, I have worked on Apache Storm and worked on data platform teams at different companies. I am presenting this talk with Tejo Thomas, who is senior solution architect at Imply India. As someone on the field, Tejo has been witness to many of these stories that we are sharing here today. He actively involved in helping customers in field and solving their data related challenges using Druid. Previously, he has worked at Hortonworks and then at Cloudera, of course. So he has a vast knowledge on the general big data field. But before we go further, what is Imply, uh, the company that both of us work at? Imply is a full stack multi-cloud data platform that is built around Apache Druid. As you can guess from the slide, Imply supports compatibility with different data sources and has successfully deployed Druid for many diverse use cases. On top of Druid, Imply also offers a visualization layer called Pivot that is custom built for Druid. Imply also offers Imply Manager that enables seamless deployment and management of Imply Druid and Imply Pivot. It is only because of these diverse customers that we work with that we are able to gather these learnings that we share with you today. I would like to say here that we are merely the messenger here. A lot of credit goes to our finest folks in the field team at Imply. They are the first one to encounter and troubleshoot these scenarios. And also the large vibrant Druid community that continues to make Druid more robust and more stable despite it being used in many widely different settings. Okay, so let's talk about Druid now. Druid is much more than a database. It also has a very advanced ingestion infrastructure that makes it super easy to ingest data from different sources. Of course, there is query piece that includes a pretty complex query execution engine and a SQL layer built on top of Calcite. But the third piece that is often not talked about so much is the control plane. And when I say control plane, I include everything that does not fall on the critical path of ingestion and query. But is nevertheless very critical in ensuring that ingestion and query subsystem continue to operate healthy. The control plane includes segment management, schema management, lookups, scheduling ingestion tasks, et cetera, and many such similar activities that are happening behind the scenes. As I said, the troubleshooting ingestion and query is very common, and usually that is the area where problem first surfaces. But many times, the underlying problem is in the control plane. It slowly creeps in undetected and then results in an outage. Usually when we think of scalability in Druid, we think of the amount of data being ingested or the amount of data being stored or being queried. But there are also other dimensions of scalability that are important as well. In the next few slides, I'll go over some of these dimensions and the scaling challenges on those and talk about some of the stories that we had uh, in these areas. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the data source chain. Now the data source is similar to a table in Druid. By itself, data source is not a physical entity and does not exist without segments that make up this data source. So it is somewhat weird to think that number of data source itself is the dimension that we need to think about. We did not either, till we had a use cases where data was modeled in such a way that there is a data source for each tenant in the system. Now, many of our customers are B2B companies and it is very typical for them to have a separate data source for each part in the business or vendor they work with. Using a separate data source is nice from isolation perspective, 
and it also acts as a good partitioning scheme on top of other partitioning schemes uh, that Druid already has. And since the queries are scoped to a particular customer, the data being accessed is only a fraction of overall data. And then on top of that, you can configure retention, loading rules, et cetera, for each customer separately because you have a data source level separation. This model works well, and we have seen it being used in practice in many Druid installations. So what can go wrong there? This model starts becoming challenging when you have a lot of churn in the partners or the vendors that data source are being modeled after. This churn can lead to explosion in the number of data sources. And as this explosion occurs, the metadata associated with these data sources explodes as well. This metadata can be audit history, it can be audit logs, compaction status, rules, etc. And data source may become inactive over time, but this state information is left behind. And if you are using real-time ingestion for these data sources, then you are going to store supervisor information. And add to that, that we have seen in, on the field, imagine you are modifying the supervisor spec for the same data source from time to time, which is going to create multiple versions of the supervisor spec that is again going to pollute your metadata store. So you are going to have all these data sources, then on for each data source, you have multiple versions of supervisor specs as well. And currently, even the APIs that get the supervisor history are not well designed to handle this explosion. So there are a lot of areas where things can go wrong. But there have been a lot of recent improvements in this area. This situation was not encountered before. But as you manage it, it led to many fixes in the way we handle these history objects in the meta store or in the memory. Some of the prominent changes that we that have been done are highlighted here. Community has added features to auto purge history for supervisors or data sources that are no longer active. I would like to give a shout out to Medas for delivering many of these enhancements that have made it very easy to deal with data source chart. It's most also the APIs to get the supervisor history have also been enhanced so that it is more efficient to carry the history for one supervisor. Now let's talk about number of segments. Coming from Kafka background, I always think of root segments as topic partitions in Kafka. Just like Kafka, grid can start tearing as you add those beyond a limit. Now for most use cases, that limit will never be reached. But given the customers we work with, it is not an uncommon scenario for us. For example, we have customers storing millions of segments and the, they are running cluster successfully, but there have been some challenges. And as you add more segments, the, most, the one service that you particularly need to watch out for is broker. Broker is not horizontally scalable and keeps the metadata about all the available segments. This metadata can take a lot of heap. So broker needs to be sized accordingly. Now that's brokers. On the historicals, given the segments are split across different historicals, high number of segments is usually not a problem on the historical side. However, we have seen circumstances where having a lot of segments start breaking limits set by the OS, such as file descriptor or memory map limit. So you should consider increasing these upfront if you are expecting very high number of segments. Now, let me talk about a particular scenario that we have seen in, on the field. More than the number of segments, we have uncovered performance bottlenecks when there are high number of segments within a time chain. Here is the story about that. Uh, a customer who came to us with the problem that queries are free. This was practically an outage. As we dug deeper, we found that Druid is not able to build the schema because the segment metadata queries are timing out. After we looked into the flame graphs, and typically flame graphs is the thing that we always gather whenever we are seeing a performance problems. We found that the customer had tens of thousands of segments in one single time chunk a scenario that we had not performance tested before. There have been similar instances too with this extreme. In such a case, the Druid does not work well because of some performance bottlenecks. And in most of these cases, the workaround has been to either drop the culprit data source or compact it 
so that the time chunk has a manageable number of segments having too many segments in one chunk can also affect coordinator as running duties is single threaded and running some duties can take a long time to process these time chunks some such issues have been reported in the community usually these too many segments in a time chunk is is as a misconfiguration problem and as I, as i said before this is why using more aggressive compaction or dropping the culprit data source tends to work well and and eliminates the problem what else can we do as i say like we can eliminate the problem itself so if you have too many segments in a time chain you should consider changing granularity and maybe using more aggressive compaction or if you have too many segments but you are worried about broker needing a lot of key because of the metadata that it needs to store you can consider splitting cluster into broker tiers there are configurations available in druid so that broker tier needs to watch the metadata only for a subset of segments and not for all the segments that druid stores druid will ensure that the queries for split segments is routed to the broker that is actually aware of those segments again as there have been fixes and improvements in these areas to make the life of cluster admin easier especially there has been performance fixes to remove bottlenecks when processing time chunks this has led to significant improvements in processing of segment metadata queries the issue that i had referred to earlier uh, that we encountered on the field there are also changes to make broker tiering better when you need to split the brokers for isolation purposes there are parameters available now to make the isolation more manageable and now you can also route sql queries to different broker tiers something that was not possible before again shout out to kashif who has delivered these enhancements and make the life easier for everyone there is of course more to be done coordinator duties can still become slow due to many segments in one time chunk that problem is still yet to be solved the sql routing that has been added recently only supports manual strategy a more intelligent routing that can auto detect the target broker tier based on the query is desirable sql routing also doesn't support jdbc right now so, so if you have similar requirements feel free to create a github issue or afford the any existing issue so that we know how much does the community need these things um there is also the fact that segment metadata that we currently store in broker can be stored more efficiently for example i have seen that row signature that we store in broker is stored individually for each segment there is a good opportunity for compression there since the schema tends to be not drastically different across segments okay so we talked about number of data sources we talked about number of segments here is another thing too much of which can be a challenge sometimes number of columns let's talk about how it can affect the broker in general sense the more columns you have or as we say the wider your schema is the required metadata size on broker is going to increase as well because you are going to store a lot of information associated with the columns with the signature type etc etc but that can be planned for upfront here is an interesting story that we didn't plan for we had a customer who was seeing significant performance degradation when druid sql was enabled if sql was disabled and they were just using native queries the queries were running just fine so an engineer from the druid team at imply uh, looked at the flame graphs again our favorite troubleshooting tool and found that a particular method in broker was taking 120 seconds to complete that method should have been should have taken less than a second this was very unusual and after a lot of debugging we finally narrowed down to the fact that customer had like 700 columns and also half a million segments this particular combination led to significant slowness when building the schema on the broker side thanks to jihoon this particular issue has been fixed as we speak but again it would not have been uncovered if the customer was not using druid in such extreme settings so that's the broker's side story what about 
historical, how well historical fares with large number of columns. Now, generally speaking, segments with wide schema can be slower to load since a lot of column metadata needs to be deserialized. The SATE problem can be alleviated by enabling lazy loading that defers the column metadata deserialization. Historicals also tend to take up more memory when loading segments with wide schema. There is one more side effect other than this, which is segment announcements. The size of segment announcements being done by the historical tends to become larger when your schema is wide. And I'm talking about schema as wide as 3000 columns, something that we have actually seen. And again, here is a story of how things took a really bad turn. We had an outage at one of our customer sites. And when we looked into this outage, we first noticed that Zookeeper had run out of disk space. When we debugged further, we discovered that Zookeeper cluster was creating too many snapshots. Now, this suggests that there was much more than usual Zookeeper activity happening in the system. And digging further, it was found that historicals were crashing continuously. As to why it was because of the large number of uh, columns that were there in the systems, and it was too much for the heap that was allocated for the historical. So historical is, is, is taking too much of memory. So it's crashing because of out of memory error. Then whenever it's, it's continuously restarting, when it's continuously restarting, it is announcing the segments. And then Zookeeper is creating these bigger snapshots on its local disk. And eventually Zookeeper runs out of disk and kaboom. So that's, that, that's, that, those are the kind of things that, that can happen uh, in reality. And in this particular scenario, we were dealing with about like 1500 columns. So you, 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 get, you get an idea. Um, the num number of columns uh, or, or wide schema can also pose challenges during ingestion. Uh, mainly because ingestion also involves loading intermediate segments that need to be merged to form the final segment. Now this becomes more memory intensive as you add more columns to the mix. And there are also increased chances of ingestion failure during the merge phase. This is why if you have a wide schema, you have to pay extra attention to the ingestion tuning. So your jobs are more reliable in this scenario. All right, so with this, I would like to hand over the presentation to Tijo and hear from him some other similar stories. Over to you, Tijo. Thank you, Abhishek. I'll be talking about some other interesting stories from the field. Uh, the first one among them is about lookup usage and things to take care while scaling the lookup. Uh, before we dive deep into lookup, a brief about what lookup is. Lookups are uh, a concept in Druid where the dimension value can be replaced from an in-memory uh, key value pair data structure. Uh, this will allow an in, inner join kind of uh, functionality. Example, in case if you have a foreign key in one of the table and need to join with a foreign table, uh, that kind of functionality can be achieved using a lookup. Lookups are preloaded in memory in all the nodes and hence it is fast in operation. In case if the lookup is small, it can be passed as inline as a map lookup. Uh, but just in case uh, if the key value pair is big and need to be loaded from a file or a database, then we can make, uh, make use of a globally cache lookup. Druid periodically polls the underlying sources to refresh the lookup based on the poll interval. Uh, let me give you a feel of it. Uh, here is an example uh, of JDBC and a URI lookup specified. Uh, JDBC lookups load the key value pair from the existing table. Uh, each node loads the lookup from the table. The parameter required to connect to the database over JDBC is provided as part of the lookup definition. On the other hand, URI lookup is loaded from a file. Here I use a tab separated uh, file that is a TSV file to load the key value pair from uh, S3. Looks good. Let's see what it costs. Uh, since lookup keep 
uh, the data in memory. Uh, its scaling has significant impact in memory footprint. Times when the lookup need to be refreshed, uh, Druid load the new lookup uh, to a uh, to memory and uh, uh, do a atom atomic swap. This means both the old lookup and the new lookup will in be in the heap in the memory during the swap. Uh, the refresh takes twice as memory uh, as the size of the lookup. Uh, because of this reason. You could specify in which memory the load, uh, the lookup need to be loaded, uh, on heap or off heap. Uh, this can be done by specifying the parameter droid lookup namespace cache type. The default value is on heap. On heap is faster, but have the challenge of high GC when there is a frequent lookup refresh. Uh, for large size lookup, and uh, uh, that's a trade-off. So if you have frequently refreshing large lookup, then consider changing the cache type to off heap. I would like to focus uh, some of the challenge we have encountered on JDBC lookup in the field. The situation is one of the customer noticed an error, cache not initialized exception. Initially, everything was good, but the issue, this issue started happening over a period of time. Uh, the error uh, cache initialized, cache not initialized will be thrown when the query tries to utilize the lookup, but the lookup is not ready. During troubleshooting, we noticed that there is a considerable increase in the number of rows in database where the lookup is loaded. The number of rows has increased from a few hundreds to order of million and still increasing. Uh, there were a lot of duplicate entry also in the database. The instance type used for the database uh, was relatively small compared to the data it ha handles. By now, you got some clue where the problem lies. We could scale up the database. We could remove the duplicates. That's correct. Is there anything else we need to optimize at the Droid side? Hold on. Uh, we will discuss how to optimize this further in the coming slide. There are some other challenges as well. If the lookups is configured to use heap memory, and at the same time, if the lookup refresh interval is very small, then uh, it creates more Java objects and causes high GC pressure. By default, lookups are loaded asynchronously unless first cache timeout is set to non-zero. This parameter uh, configure how long to wait before utilizing the lookup. First, cache timeout need to be, uh, the uh, first cache timeout uh, parameter uh, need to be uh, less than the timeout period that is Druid manager lookup post update timeout. If the first cache timeout is not set, the lookups are loaded asynchronously. That is um, the only way to identify whether it's loaded successfully or not is just by looking at the log. Logs need to be monitored to identify if there is any failure in the loading lookup. One other optimization to improve the loading of lookup is to increase the number of threads dedicated for the lookup extraction. By default, the value of two, that is two threads, is good enough for most of the scenarios. This default value is uh, not enough, especially when the lookups are refreshed with a high frequency. Often customer ask this question, how to monitor this lookup? Unfortunately, lookups cannot be monitored with the Droid metrics. Next slide, uh, we'll discuss an alternate approach to monitor the same from the log. Logs are written while Druid, serving, uh, Druid services load the lookup. Once the lookup is loaded, the number of rows loaded to memory is mentioned in the log. This, along with the average size of the rows, will give approximate size of the memory utilized for the lookup. This is a typical scenario from the field. Many customers also found a variation of this 
in their Druid use case. Uh, and this is going to be an um, interesting topic. In this case, customer has large data source with 100 Kafka partition. Same number of ingestion tasks to match the Kafka partition, mainly because this use case does not want any Kafka lag if there is any spike in the incoming data. As you know, each ingestion task load one copy of the lookup mentioned in the lookup here by default. When, a, when we uh, define a lookup, it will get created in the default lookup tier. Customer has large lookup. To give an idea of how large it is, uh, almost 50 million rows for one of the largest lookups. Uh, the customer has almost 30 plus lookup across multiple data sources. Uh, the total estimated size only for the lookup is uh, approximately 2 GB. Total memory equal to 2 GB multiplied by 2, uh, uh, which is uh, 4 GB. The factor 2 is because Druid lookup refreshes on a frequent interval. And during refresh, it takes twice the size of the lookup, uh, size of the memory uh, for the lookup. Uh, memory required for the entire cluster, that is for 100 tasks. So 100 multiplied by 4 GB. Uh, that is around 400 GB. 400 GB of RAM just for lookup. Before we discuss about the lookup optimization, uh, just to highlight uh, each ingestion task, uh, which is run as a separate Java process, uh, loads the lookup. If there is any transformation using lookup during ingestion, then the task needs the lookup, or uh, maybe during uh, query time. Uh, loop um, for the query time, uh, real time queries, the lookup can be used. Since lookup may be used while querying or while ingestion, by default, the task load the lookup before starting ingestion. All the lookups, lookups are loaded from uh, lookup tier by default. It is underscore underscore default is the lookup tier, default lookup tier. So, how we can uh, optimize this? In reality, the lookup is used in tables where the column values need to be converted. Hence, there is a dependency on which lookup will be used in which table. Uh, so instead of assigning all the lookups to a lookup tier, create multiple lookup tier and load only the lookup tier required for the data source. So the optimization is a two-step process. Step one, create lookup in specific tier, which is required for the data source. Step two, create ingestion task with lookup tier mentioned in the context with parameter lookup, druid lookup, lookup tier. Let's see uh, this in action. In this ingestion scenario, we have two data source. One is a, a delivery table, which uses only country lookup. Second table is taxi table, which make use of two lookups, that is country lookup and product lookup. While ingesting the data for delivery, there is no need to load product lookup because product lookup is not used in the uh, delivery table. Hence, the idea is to create a new lookup tier, say tier one, with only one lookup, that is the country lookup. Uh, since there is only one historical process in a node, it makes sense to load all the lookup, uh, that is load all lookup in a default uh, tier. Another story of ingesting large number of files in Druid. The Zuckerberg is throwing error, stating that Druid is trying to store message size more than 512KB. Uh, Zookeeper actually de designed to store small size data, typically less than one MB. By default, this value uh, in Druid is set to uh, as uh, 512 KB. Some key reason uh, or role of Zookeeper in Druid is primarily for implementing a reliable messaging uh, to implement a redundancy, redundant service, service discovery, and synchronizing process execution. Emphasis, em emphasizing on the first point, 
emphasizing on the first point uh, that is the reliable messaging across different services uh, in this context. Uh, the list of files to be ingested is passed through Zookeeper. When the list of files larger uh, with a larger message size, that is uh, more than uh, 512 KB, uh, then this error is thrown. So how to find it? Um, connect to ZK CLI and get value under task, uh, partial index generate data source. So what is the solution? Uh, is it not possible to ingest a large number of files? The answer is yes. The solution is to restrict the number of files to ingest in a single subtask. This can be set by a max number of uh, max num files in the split inspect. Even though it is not relevant in this context to explain on the max split size, I wish to highlight another key parameter in the split inspect, which is often not that much noticed. Uh, max split size uh, controls the maximum number of bytes of input file to process in a single subtask. Increasing this value will tend to take more memory and decreasing this value to uh, increase the parallelism, provided there is enough task to ingest the data in parallel. Default value for this is 1 GB. Uh, Justin from uh, Imply will cover more about a batch ingestion in his session based on measure. A short recap of what we discussed today. We discussed the importance of control plane while scaling the Troid cluster. We have seen some of the challenges in scaling the number of data source um, and configuring the cleanup activities. Uh, thanks to Abhishek to our discussing the scaling of the number of segments, number of columns in the data source, etc. Abhishek also covered the improvement in the recent version of Druid. We discussed about some of the stories on Lookup, also discussed about the bottleneck on Zookeeper while ingesting large number of files. Uh, please get connected to the community through Twitter, Druid forums, Google user group. Discuss your challenge with the community, help the community to grow and also get help if you are stuck be part of evangelizing to it, sharing the Druid knowledge with others as well. Thank you.